Thank you. Thank you, Brother Sir. And thanks uh, all audience who they want uh, to give me the opportunity to speak uh, in front of you. So, I am Nitin Chimote, I am representing Green Union. Um, I am handling uh, across India open access portfolio for the company. So, uh, in specific to RTC field and master specific, first of all, I will take a point on RTC. So, um, in 2018 2019, uh, there was a need for the hybrid power supply, round the clock power supply, with the highest capacity utilization factor. In that, RTC means in renewable, uh, we can say the RTC like a thermal. So, it is not a constant power. Constant is, uh, means it is informed in nature. But overall annual performance is almost 80 to 90 percent. Simil similarly, the thermal power plant sometimes, uh, even a state run, a state run generation company, QD, the is about 65 percent, 70 percent maximum. But renewable is giving the RTC power of in the range of 80 to 90 percent as well. So RTC kind of two kinds we can go with the RTC in terms of wind and solar. Uh, apart from in addition to that, we, once we add the battery. So, there will be the efficiency can be increased to 80 to 95 percent as well around the clock in a year. So, in the, uh, in the hybrid uh, things, this is the only possible RTC majority benefited to the state or to the country once we have the hybrid mechanism, hybrid in terms of wind storage or plus, uh, plus wind storage and solar. So, this will be help out to get the maximum utilization of resources. Now, coming to the Maharashtra standpoint on the RTC, um, uh, uh, first of all, thank you to MEDA and other um, governmental authorities who have come up with the uh, good policy in 30th uh, June 2022. Um, they have given the lot of incentive in terms of electricity duty for generation of renewable power. Uh, but in terms of hybrid, there is a only one or two sentences mentioned in the policy. So, we uh, means uh, to uh, develop the hybrid RTC project in a Maharashtra for the Maharashtra consumers to go net zero or decarbonization their agenda. So, uh, that policy should be, uh, should be, I think there should be the proper standard operating procedure how this policy will be uh, benefited. Uh, apart from the electricity duty benefit, hybrid policy also get additional incentive to develop the market both in the captive or in the third party. Uh, I think Gujarat was the first state uh, two years back have come up with the good hybrid yeah. policy and given a good, good incentive to the CNS yeah. commercial and industrial segment uh, in terms of uh, development of the hybrid project only. So, uh, so this is, I think we are, everyone is not uh, here, uh, not about the business. Uh, we are talking about the renewable is a vision for everything. It is not about the only if you do the business or do the competitions uh, in the commodity market. So, because we are the first generation who feels the impact of climate change. So, I am just talking now about the climate change. We are the first generation who will feel the impact of climate change and last generation who can do something for it. So, I think everyone uh, like a, um, here will be help out in terms of peanuts, but everyone will, uh, here uh, sitting in this conference will be help out to move our green hydrogen on net zero agenda for central or state government. So this is the first part. Again, uh, hybrid I have mentioned, again then we can do something, this is just a suggestion. Because if we have some obligation on industries to purchase renewable power, Compulsorily, like previously, there is the renewable purchase obligation for designated consumers or open access consumer. But now, for the uh, good industries, if there is the obligation to purchase the renewable power, uh, whatever will be the number, I, I will take 5 percent, 10 percent, or more uh, below that also. And on top, uh, it's a uh, depend on how MSCB cell and MSCB cell act on that. But there, if, if it is there, then definitely everyone, uh, everyone understands the importance of renewable. Right now, MSC, MSC sector is not much focused on the renewable, but other only large scale industry are focusing on uh, their green hydrogen or are in under agenda. Then, in terms of green corridor, uh, a challenge is either in the RTC project or pure place solar or pure play wind project. What are the major challenges? Green corridor will be helped out because on site. 
there is no insufficient evaporation in the system that uh, we can uh, pass on that transmission line to the proper feeding substation. So that, is, that are major challenges even during the construction time also there is a power unavailability. So these are the challenges in uh, challenges in evaporation of the power which will be help out uh, with the proper grade corridor for renewable segments. Uh, so that will be benefited to the state government, central governments and other all R&D developers and consumer as well. Uh, Major constraint in the last two years, if you find the safety bit, uh, almost 44 percent failure of safety bit, uh, reason being a uh, lot of cancellation of the power purchase agreements and um, uh, because of the high cost of module prices. So, this bit was not happened in the last two years. Now, uh, in the last one uh, onwards, they have started with the good uh, addition of the capacity to the safety. So, uh, we are also coming up with the, our first manufacturing in uh, June uh, onwards. Uh, Redim is coming up, coming up with their own model manufacturing in India. So, model and sale both manufacturing. So, this will be help out to with our agenda also and to help out to the sector to grow, um, uh, grow in a very much fast way. <coughs> then, uh, the point which I mentioned previously about the clean energy open access. Uh, uh, one positive note, Prashant sir has given, uh, it should be allowed as per the green open access rule 2022. Green open access should be allowed to the 100 kilowatt of uh, consumer, but uh, on the other side, maybe there may be a lot of challenges because ISCOM and Transco and MEDA, all other government agencies are facing a lot of problems for the capital transaction to maintain this cash flow structure, to evaluate the capital structure. So, once a lot of consumers will be uh, enter in this 100 kilowatt of segment, there may be the challenge that issue should be parallelly uh, understand and should be taken well carefully uh, before the implementation of this policy or anything. So, I think this is the small note and thank you very much uh, for giving some um, good chance to speak about the RTC Power Project. Thank you. Thank you, Nitin. Uh, just for the sake of understanding, uh, can you just put the, what are the project costs for RTC, solar, wind, hybrid plus battery? Just a ballpark figure or some uh, indicated figure if you don't want to disclose it. Okay, so uh, whatever I can disclose as the uh, company is the district company in the Nantex, so uh, there is some restriction to speak on the public forum, but uh, approximate cost in terms of RTC projects is we uh, is a almost three times. Uh, reason being to achieve that 80 to 90 percent severe, suppose there is a 100 megawatt of hybrid bid, in the back end capacity it will be 300 megawatt. So, uh, latest in the CNI consumer uh, in the Maharashtra. We have 1.3 gigawatt of wind solar hybrid projects. So, Maharashtra having the very good potential to generate hybrid, but unfortunately, we don't have any hybrid policy. Uh, so, uh, in terms of cost, if we talk about three times the normal solar or normal uh, wind, we go, suppose wind almost in the range of 7 to 10 uh, crores per megawatt. So, it is depend, uh, I am talking about total infrastructure, evacuation infrastructure at 220 kV level and total including. Uh, evaporation structure, install uh, capacity, wind capacity, solar capacity. So, it will be go three times, approximate to uh, more than 20 crores per megawatt also because of the back end capacity will be had. So, uh, this is about the pure play hybrid project which is wind and solar. Once we add the storage, obviously now it is, um, it is on the last scale uh, storage, uh, there is the only impact of maybe not more than one rupees. But for the CNI segments, I think the impact can be around 2 rupees and, uh, uh, two, two rupees and onwards. Do you have any RTC projects running somewhere? So, uh, RTC projects, uh, we can say um, RTC project is still under construction and uh, not operational. So, okay. what is the expected generation per megawatt? So, per megawatt of expected generation is around 70 to 80 uh, lakhs units per megawatt per year. Okay. Thank you, Nitin, uh, for that. Uh, let us move to uh, uh, Tata Power, Mr. Vijay Menon. Uh, Menon, sir, can you just uh, throw light on the requirement of utility scale developers, CPC, and asset owners in terms of maximizing site yield and uh, minimizing model to model supply, supply risk to optimizing quality, including the role of bike community across local and overseas model supplies? Thank you, Mr. Vijay. Uh, good afternoon, morning to everyone, and uh, thank you. 
for organizing the event. And uh, thank you for, to the federal panelists as well. My name is Vijay. I'm heading for corporate affairs at Adapa. I think uh, to briefly touch, I think most of our speakers here have uh, brought out some of the challenges. But before I do that, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Tagar Kaliwar and Mr. Nade for very encouraging opening statements, which shows that uh, there is an active interest despite the challenges that we uh, exist. Uh, at our end, we have, uh, of course, we have all three segments, generation, transmission and distribution. And as an energy operator, we have around 6,500 megawatts of our assets. Of that, uh, almost 1.6 kilowatts we have invested in the state of Maharashtra. <laughs> and uh, if I may say, we may have initially started the renewable journey 107 years ago with the first hydro plant, not far from where we are seated right now. Uh, and when we look at the uh, you know, investor process, I think today there are a few open-ended challenges which we are facing. I won't say necessarily Maharashtra specific, they are more uh, at national level in some of the other forms. right? So when we are looking to invest, one is we want a regular flow of opportunities. I think that is one big matter which we also reached up, raised up with MNR in a, in a meeting a couple of months back. We want periodicity of opportunities. When we look at it from an EPC or developer window, we want a periodicity of opportunities because having all of them come together puts a limitation on the bandwidth in terms of what we can have. So that's one thing that challenge we face. The other thing is then when the projects are built out, they should reach closure in a defined time frame. I think a few mentions earlier already happened when we talked about Helsinki not being able to close some of the PPAs but then similar story has happened in multiple states including here where the tendering window has closed but the, either there is an extension or the bids are handled so having a periodicity of opportunities which are closed in a time frame gives investors from IPT window or EPC window the confidence that they can allocate resources to you know, be very aggressive on those bits that come up. So these are the two things. Then I think the uh, critical part where Meda has taken the initiative to bring the single window approval system, I think that's a very critical component as well, where we as a, operators of plants many times struggle a lot in terms of getting the uh, uh, approvals in a defined time frame. Yeah, so it's not entirely ironed out yet, but a great initiative well, like, point by Meda by moving everything online. Then I think once we, when I look at that, then there is other aspects, which is the land and connectivity. Uh, connectivity also can be discussed at length. Uh, we have found uh, at SQ level, as there may be connectivity available, like was mentioned, uh, there is challenge. Like we go for an apply for a project, we either get a Lilo, and then later on in between it is switched to a direct line. So having the connectivity aspect clear helps us uh, as investors too. We have a very definitive cost component when doing the uh, costing for the project. Then, if I look at the next level, uh, let's say land, which is a critical aspect, uh, as the renewables and solar in particular has reached a significant amount of you know uh, traction with almost 50% of renewable capacity added being solar. I think the there is a lot of pushback we face when the land is privately held. Because there is a perception of an opportunity cost for the transaction. So the land is a big issue. Uh, even in cases there is government land, sometimes there are issues. So many states either move to uh, solar parks to help build the tanks, uh, control the timeline, and also make sure the uh, permitting is linked to that so the bidders are able to focus on the tariff aspect if there is a kind of bid or EPC as well. So the, uh, if the land could be centralized and if land remains a challenge, some of the opportunities that we could explore for Maharashtra also would be a mix of uh, floating solar which does not need us to occupy any petty's land and uh, there is a lot of recent discussion on pump storage. That also presents a significant opportunity because Maharashtra is very rich in hydro resource and we can look at that as well. So it is a challenge come solution. Uh, these are the first level thoughts I would say in terms of the expectations. 
and then if we went to the uh, bankability, mm -hmm. yeah, bankability. I think so. One of the challenges has been cost, and I've actually spent on 15 years in the industry with the first, <coughs> which the Jai got also at uh, 70 rupees plus tariff. The the journey has been such that the solar prices have continuously fallen over a period of time, which has Unfortunately, I'd say at a national level, uh, with many stakeholders, the expectation is that cost will continue to fall. But uh, cost cannot perpetually fall. Cost may change differently, not because of component prices, maybe the efficiencies grow, maybe other uh, disruption happens in the technologies, which helps us to uh, either improve on the speed of construction or the kind of material used or the output. So, there are many options that could exist. Uh, we need to shape that a bit to be you know, premedicated that the solar cost has to be continuously lower and lower. Uh, and the recent events after COVID has hit has probably lent um, some trust to that because the supply chain has been disrupted. So, our India would probably focus on this could be, which is already being done, one is by introducing ALM, but it's a double edged sword because then it restricts the number of available partners who can offer the product. The, on the other hand, it also presents the opportunity for people like us who are also in manufacturing to expand that. So, we've done a last year, we have signed an MOU for 4000 megawatt uh, cell and module line manufacturing in Tamil Nadu. And then, uh, from a quality perspective, that remains a perpetual challenge because, from a consumer perspective or a user perspective, most stakeholders are not in a position to verify what they're getting. All panels more or less the same. And uh, it is very critical, I think, the, from a bankability perspective, because the bankers, the uh, financiers, the private equity funds, people bringing in the money are worried about the completion of the project and the, uh, you know, the generation as per the plan. So, if the modules are not of the best possible quality, it significantly puts at risk. And I have read around a month back a report. For Europe, they have done uh, extrapolation of data or projects installed from 2004 onwards, if I am not wrong. And they found that modules installed in the last 5-6 years have degraded significantly more than the modules installed 15 years ago. So, it lends again, uh, you know, proof to the fact that it is important that the components that we use, panels or otherwise, be of highest quality. So, having certain independent assessments like AS, LMM and other bodies who certify, uh, this will definitely help pull down the risk as well as the US. Uh, thank you, Vijay. Uh, that was the first kind of view from Tata uh, Profit, the major player in the uh, super sector. Uh, now, uh, as you rightly mentioned, uh, solar we started uh, with the uh, 25 crores per megawatt. And then the tariff was around 17 to 95 percent in the last first time, uh, 19 rupees uh, sold. The solar uh, cost, project cost has dropped up by almost 80 percent now, and the tariff has dropped up by 90 percent now. So it is uh, uh, working, and uh, the technology and the players have adopted that change, and uh, in treating by for that matter, is very happy to get it down to uh, 2 rupees, 3 rupees from 19 rupees. Especially, especially in Gujarat, the GP is uh, uh, scratching their heads because they are still paying some 15 rupees or 12 rupees uh, to the HR Commission for 2010. And there were certain uh, uh, cases of uh, EPA uh, renegotiation, the tariff renegotiation. So, we moved to Intech Solar. If you have got some experience on utility scale project and the challenges and the actual challenges faced by you uh, for development of utility scale projects. 